Welcome back about 20 minutes away from first pitch in elimination game game three between the Mets and the Padres James McCann has not started behind the plate in the first two games nor will he start in the elimination game tonight. He and Tomas Nito kind of split catching duties in terms of starts in the regular season down the middle. But now that it's come postseason time, it's been all Tomas Nito. And Buck Showalter was asked about his catching platoon for this series earlier today. I know you talk about arteries of decisions a lot. Have you had to touch base at all, any point this weekend with James McCann, with him sure. not starting at all? Sure. How did how does that go with him? James got a lot of pride. You watch him. I, I was thinking, I actually brought it up to the team. He gets pinch hit for in Atlanta, and because the guy that pinch hit for him was a catcher, he was out catching the pitcher between innings. Those are little things, you know. He was talking to Glenn and I yesterday about, uh, you know, once we had the lineup and everything, that he wanted to go down and catch some sides to stay ready. James a pro. He's a professional, and I know people can make, you know, their sarcastic remarks, but he, he's he been uh, a pro through thick and thin. He's, uh, he wants to win, and he wants to do what he can. So proud of the way he's handled the injuries he's had this year and the, the back and forth. I think we've used, what, five catchers this year? Kind of tells you how demanding that position is, but, uh, you know, we might need him and he'll be ready if we do. These are broad strokes but these are some of the differences between Tomas Nito and James McCann better catchers ERA for McCann higher caught stealing rate but the better block rate and a significant better uh, block rate for Nito and uh, maybe a few extra strikes every couple of starts. You could also break down the Padres catchers the same way and draw your own conclusions lower catchers ERA better block rate for Nola better caught stealing rate and perhaps a little better framing for Alfaro in addition to a, a lot of extra pop. But it seems to be that there's a trend here guys on the starting catching in the postseason when managers have a choice between a bat first catcher who perhaps doesn't handle the staff as well and the opposite it's generally the defensive guy that gets the nod. Well when you talk about the postseason and, and every count is a rally is Ford bats were of an offensive catcher, which you deem an offensive catcher, and I'm not saying any of these guys are, but within the offense versus defense, or is the guy calling every pitch over 100 plus pitches that we're going to throw that night? Tonight, every pitch is going to matter at this extreme level. Throwing the right one at the right time is everything. Pitch calling, that catcher's ERA, to me, you're going to go with the best defensive catcher. And I watched this happen in Boston, Matt. Jared Salton, lucky career year. Great catcher, great game caller. But we had this guy named David Ross, and he was like a manager on the field. He started catching a, a lot of Lester, and it just became win day. And then we had to win in the World Series, down two games to one. And David Ross ended up starting here in St. Louis, catching Clay Buckholz all the way down to being this right here and, and he was our field manager hit 180 on the year had some big hits but at the end of the day you'll take defense over four at bats of offense anytime no question about it as far as I'm concerned it's about the putting the fingers down and, and having a game plan and understanding how important that is for me baseball is about pitching and catching a catch catcher obviously the most important position player on the field especially when you're trying to build your staff around pitching and and for me it was Chooch I mean as Carlos Ruiz if you talk to any one of those great pitchers that we had from from Cole Hamels to uh, there's Ryan Matson who was the pitching in, in the bullpen uh, Brad Lidge if you talk to any of these guys even you know Roy Halliday etc cetera, etc cetera, you want the guy who knows exactly what to throw at what time um, you want that guy behind the plate and you want those pitchers to trust him that they can bounce a breaking ball that they can they can throw any pitch in any count and not worry about whether it's going to be in front of them stay in front of them he can say save a game uh, uh, to me it's all about defense with the catcher especially when you're building your team with with pitching would, it, would you when you were GM did you have complete license on that was it Charlie was it the starter that would determine who was out there on a postseason game how much 
communication was there. No, I think Charlie was the man. I, I never let the. I, I never made those decisions as a GM. I let the manager make those decisions. But, uh, but I know that Charlie. Um, you know, he he would consult. You know, he would he would talk a lot to to the pitching coach and and discuss it. But it was huge all the way because the pitchers they knew that the pitchers felt very very comfortable.